This is Mark J. Boone, Assistant Professor in the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Hong Kong Baptist University. This is a video abstract from my article, William James and Alama Iqbal on Empirical Faith, an article published in the Haythrop Journal in 2019. This is something of a sequel to my earlier article, also in Haythrop Journal, on Augustine and William James. It turns out St. Augustine, Christian Church Father, and William James, American pragmatist philosopher of the late 1800s and early 1900s, have a lot in common in their defenses of the rationality of religious belief. There are some differences as well, and I go over this in more detail in my earlier article. And here in the sequel article, I go over the greater similarities between William James and Alama Iqbal, and trace the connections because Iqbal is drawing from James. Now, William James is an American pragmatist philosopher, late 1800s, early 1900s, Alama Iqbal, possibly you've never heard of. That happens. But he's an interesting character worth knowing something about. He is from the 1900s. He's from the Indian subcontinent uh, before, uh, before partition, back when there was no uh, nation of India or Pakistan. There's just British India. And he's also British in some sense, as well as Indian, and plausibly in some, um, in some, by some criteria on a Pakistani. He is a British knight. And Iqbal is the author of poetry in... I believe, Persian and Urdu, and the author of philosophy in English and Persian. So a trilingual poet philosopher and a British knight, and credited with the idea of creating a Pakistan, a separate country for the, India, for the um, uh, Islamic populations of British India. And so Pakistan recognizes him as uh, something of a founding father figure as well as its national poet. So I think of him as a Pakistani philosopher. If you think of him as an Indian philosopher, that's fine. You're not wrong. And he is an Islamic philosopher. That much doesn't have any ambiguity. And Iqbal writes this book, The Reconstruction of Religious Thought in Islam, or originally gives a series of lectures later arranged into a book. Uh, with that title. In this book, he draws on an eclectic array of sources. There will be uh, Islamic philosophers and poets and Western philosophers in, as well that quite possibly you've never even heard of. So many names in this book. He draws from an eclectic array of sources, including a good chunk of modern philosophy and a good chunk of Islamic philosophy and directly from the Quran and from various other sources, Rumi, uh, from uh, Sufi, Sufi poetry. He draws from an eclectic array of sources to re- reconstruct um, Islamic thought for the modern world. And this involves reconsidering religion and empiricism. Empiricism now is the theory that we get knowledge from experience, that we should look to experience for um, evidence for our beliefs, look to experience to test our beliefs, test our beliefs in experience. Uh, people sometimes say this theory about knowledge is not compatible with religion because religion requires us to blindly follow what some authority tells us to believe. James and Iqbal say that's not true. That's not what, what religion means. Religion is actually drawn from experience. At least it's supposed to be, and it often is. And um, James gives this analysis as part of his, well, his pragmatic philosophy. Iqbal is a bit different. Iqbal gives this analysis as part of his uh, reconsideration of the nature of Islamic thought in the modern world. He's trying to rediscover an empirical Islam, which he thinks is the original Islam, and in fact was there before these modern Western philosophers uh, discovered empiricism in the first place. But he does draw from those Western philosophers, and in my article I trace some of these connections, in particular the connections to William James. So James and Iqbal both agree that a thoroughgoing empiricism, a thorough empiricism that uh, doesn't make an exception, we get uh, knowledge from experience here, but not from these experiences, a thorough ex going empiricism must consider religious experience as an experience we could possibly get knowledge from. They also argue that a religious belief is tested by its fruits. And in saying the same things that James has said later, in later saying the same things that James had said earlier, Iqbal draws from James on these points. And one key difference is James is just developing um, his thoroughgoing empiricist philosophy, but Iqbal is trying to reconstruct Islamic thought in the modern world along largely traditional lines. There's a passage in James, I believe it's in the uh, Varieties of Religious Experience, where James has gone over the evidence 
from experience that uh, pertains to religion. He's gone over the evidences of religious experience and he's argued it calls for some kind of a conclusion. And then he gives his own philosophical, explicitly philosophical hypothesis to uh, explain all the data of experience. And he says that the religious orthodoxies will hear part ways with him and they'll go some other direction. They'll draw from their own traditions and their own orthodoxies to to account for the facts of religious experience. And this is exactly what Iqbal does. He'll draw from the orthodoxy of traditional Islam in to, order to explain the, um, the data of religious experience. Now, I myself <laughs> will go a third way. Um, I'm a traditional Christian. I'll follow the Nicene Creed. So <laughs> I'll draw from that source to explain the data. So um, it turns out James and Iqbal have a lot in common, but there is um, at least that one significant difference. And um, there are other ways you can go here, which is an interesting point here. Um, James and Iqbal have some interesting things to say, perhaps some insightful things to say, but you don't want to mistake them for the whole story. They are um, interesting participants in the very long, ongoing discussion of faith and reason and I think it's better we don't neglect them. It's better we um, we understand their contribution to the discussion. I recommend anyone, I recommend this article for anyone interested in that discussion or interested specifically in James or specifically in Iqbal. It's available from the Haythrop Journal website, and you may have to pay a little bit to access it. I think at some point in the future, copyright restrictions will permit me to post a version of the article on my Phil pages or philpeople.org profile and my academia.edu profile. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you don't want to pay, you can access it perhaps from a university library, maybe a public library. Thanks for watching.